Good morning. Don, will you introduce our speaker today? Yes. Um, I'm delighted that we have today uh, Greg Volk, who's been in this game a, a long time now. And I've met him uh, when we were uh, both in the uh, Natural Philosophy Alliance and have enjoyed watching his work develop over the years. Um, so he's uh, got a lot, I think, to share with us and brings to uh, the table uh, insights that we haven't explored uh, previously. So I look forward to hearing what uh, Greg has to say. And thank you, Greg, for uh, presenting to us. Well, you're welcome. And everybody can hear me okay before I start? Yes. Okay, good. Um, well, I'm Greg Volk, and I know Don from the NPA, Natural Philosophy Alliance, which is now the CNPS, but uh, we won't get into that. Anyway, uh, and I wrote this program, uh, and oh, that's the thing I wanted to put. Uh, I had a uh, Mathematica program that I wrote. Let me uh, let me show you that. It's actually that, and I did share that with uh, with you. Let me, I, I sent it in an email, so that's the quickest way for me to find it. Uh, here it is, and I called it toroids bridell so there's the mathematica program that generates these things uh and they're called structures and uh, i'm uh i'll get i'll get back to this uh later i'll just keep that open uh so what i want to do now is talk about the structures themselves now this is a structure that i generated uh using a program called geogebra so i'll, I'll give you the honest i'll, I'll confess by the way Joe, it's good to see you. I haven't seen you in 10 years. <laughs> so wonderful to see you again. Uh, so I, I noticed, I know Joe. All right. Uh, anyway, so a structure, as everyone I think here knows, is is, a, is these loopy things that that hold themselves together by uh, like a tensegrity does. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, there's tension, uh, you know, obviously wanting to go back to a circular form, but then there's also the, you know, holding it back by the other two loops. So they kind of self- uh, structify, which is kind of cool. So uh, I, I had a realization about 10 years ago that uh, that these uh, these loops, you know, there, there's there's two loops when you're looking at the um, at the tetrahedron, which is this one. You can kind of see four nodes: one, two, three, four, which which represent a tetrahedron. And I think Don had already made one around a cube and one around an octahedron at that point. And I. And I said, gee, I think we can make one out of uh, the other platonic solids, which would be the dodecahedron and the icosahedron. And I remember this was that we were at Don's house after an NPA meeting and Joe was there and we spent a day uh, putting these things together. And uh, that was kind of cool. So I, I, I remember that day and that was a lot of fun. Um, so anyway, uh, so it's obviously possible to do that. And then I, I afterwards I thought, gee, these loops look a lot like the kind of loops that you see on the path of a torus. So maybe I can I can make these in uh, graphics by by having tori, as it were, and then having these fit on the torus. So you may not see this immediately, but each one of these is actually sitting on a torus, and the three toruses are at 90 degree angles to each other. And so, um, and I, I know I'm not doing this all necessarily in an order, but what, I, what I've done is I've, uh, I've got views of each of these files available to you in the chat. There are five links which correspond to the five uh, uh, platonic solids that you that have these based on them. So that's that's how that works. So what I want to do is kind of bop back and forth between things. I guess what I want to do first is I have a little presentation. It's just a few slides, and I'm I'm trying to respect the time. I supposed to, I supposed to be done in 45 minutes. This could be as long or as short as you want it to be. So uh, I'll give you the medium version or the medium short version. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and I hope you can see this. Uh, just a quick couple of quick slides I threw together this morning uh, on Bridell toroids is what I call them. Uh, first of all, something you should know about toruses is that they, they have the same math as something called Apollonian circles which were discovered by a Greek guy named Apollonius, obviously. And they're really, really fascinating to study. But you can see that there's two sets of circles. The blue circles in this, if you can imagine it, if you can imagine it sweeping around a plane and then coming back the other side, that's the blue circles. And they actually form toruses, whereas the red circles, if you sweep around, they, they become spheres. 
And the red circles always pass through these two key points, which are the bipolar points, if you will. And the blue circles always have those points in the center, not in the centers, but inside of them. And you can see that they aren't the centers, that they actually kind of sweep out from them, okay? So everybody kind of get a feel for what Apollonian circles look like. Now I'm going to study that in a little bit more detail. And uh, what, what we want to study before I get into the torus, which is the three-dimensional version, is just the two-dimensional version, which is the Apollonian circles. And those are called bipolar coordinates. So that's what we're looking at here. And I do have a ge GeoGebra or file that, that shows us that you can change this point. This point P can change. And as you change that point, you can you get different sets of circles. The, the blue circles are these here, and the red circles are the spheres, which are circles here. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see that. And this, this circle, which has A and A on it, I call that the base circle. So the point A is going back to here. That's that's like these points right here. Everybody can see my pointer, that where the red circles always pass through the points A, and the blue circles always have the points A inside them. And you could have any point A that you want. You might as well call it one, which is the most convenient notation, but it could be whatever you want. So that's what A represents. And then I have two angles. One is uh, phi, which is uh, if I find the center of that circle that passes through A, I'm sorry, I'm sweeping around as I'm showing you, you're not seeing that. Um, but anyway, as you, as you can see that H, the point H is the center of the, 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 the red circles. And then it makes an angle when you go to point A of phi. Okay, so that's where that angle comes from. And then the blue circle, if you find a point that intersects the base circle, which is the point, I guess I called it B in this diagram. So the, the center of the circle is the point R, and then the point B is at 90 degrees from there. That angle at point R is the angle psi. So with the angles phi and psi, I can find, I can uh, locate every single point. There is a little bit of an ambiguity because those circles also intersect once for every intersection outside the circle, they also intersect inside the circle. But I don't want to get into that detail too much. But you get the point phi and psi. So just getting back one more time to these Apollonian circles, you can see that I can identify every point on the plane by a unique set of circles, or I should say two circles, because there's a point inside and outside the base circle that where the two red and the blue circles connect. So is everybody everybody kind of clear on that that I can I can specify the entire plane with the angles psi and phi and a choice of a which I'm going to say is one. Okay, so that's what we're doing when we're when we're defining toroidal coordinates. And then this is the equation, and I hope you can all see it. it's real. It, it, it I won't I'm not I don't go through all the math here today, but bottom line is the angle phi and then cosine theta is the angle that sweeps around. So I have I have an I coordinate, a J coordinate, and a K coordinate, and this is a way to represent each point P using those three coordinates. It's pretty elegant. I, I this is the formula that I use, and you can see that I get, you know, I get all three coordinates, psi, phi, and theta, and I can identify everything by that. So this is, and by the way, if I if I have a constant psi, that's that's a torus. That's the surface of a torus. If I have a constant theta, that's a plane. You know, showing showing that constant plane, but I can identify that. And if I have a constant psi, that would be um, that would be a, a, what would that be? <laughs> That'd be a sphere. Sorry, I forgot. That'd be a, one of those spheres. So the sphere, the torus, and the and the planes coming out form identify each point, and that's what we're doing with toroidal coordinates. So that's basically. Oh, and then by the way, a lot of times toroidal coordinates are identified in terms of instead of Instead of psi, which I use, they use eta, or it wouldn't have to be eta, but they use um, they use uh, hyperbolic coordinates, uh, and which might be eta. But I'm just this is a, a just a kind of a neat thing to know that every uh, every uh, 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 coordinate that can be identified uh, in, in terms of sines and cosines can also be identified in terms of hyperbolic sine and cosine, and vice versa. There's a there's a, a unique one to one correspondence. So if you know this. The, the, if you know that tangent of eta equals psi of sine of, of psi, then all these other six equations are true. These, these are six equations that tell you the same thing. <laughs> but if you know one of these things, you can get all the others. You can also, if you know psi, you can get eta. And if you know eta, you can get psi. So there really is no, uh, I think it's easier to think in terms of 
you know, normal coordinates instead of hyperbolic coordinates, which is normally the way toroidal coordinates are expressed. So that's it for this uh, this little equation, uh, this little uh, presentation. But I want to now get to the important stuff. Oh, by the way, I wrote a paper. This is, uh, geez, this is over 10, 12 years old, which has, that's where I pulled this out of, was that paper, I call it uh, toroids, vortices, knots, topology, and quanta, which gets a little more into detail on the mathematics of it. And honestly, I, it's not anything, you know, earth shattering, but I, I've never seen what I've done anywhere else. So uh, it's, I won't, I won't go into detail about it here. Just to tell you, if you're interested, I'd be more than happy to share this paper with you. I was intending to publish it in the proceedings of the MPA, but uh, I didn't for, and I got probably, I got about 20 papers that are like that, uh, that are just unpublished. So anyway, I'm happy to share if anybody is interested in that. So let's get back to this now. What I want to show now is this is this is the torus of uh, uh, this is the uh, tetra structure. Now in GeoGebra, we have uh, and uh, I see all these pictures here, so I'm going to get rid of the pictures if I can because they're in my way. Uh, can I do that? Oh boy, no! I, I, all I did was move Joe on top. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Show smaller. There we go. Okay, it's out of the way a little bit more. All right, so uh, this this is the code as I showed you before. What I can do is now turn on the various toruses. So I just want to show you. Uh, I, I call now the parametric equation for a surface, which I call anything that starts with an S. I, that's a surface. That's my so this is the surface with the z-axis. Okay, so it's a torus centered in the x-y plane around about the z-axis. You'll notice that same equation, and I have to stretch it out. Shows up, but with a surface, I have two parameters: theta and eta. And with a with a uh, curve, I just have one parameter, theta, and I and I have the the the, the, the eta has to equal something, okay? So that, uh, well, okay. Let me back up. Getting back to the toroidal coordinates, if my if I'm going in the theta direction, that is around the curve, and I'm also simultaneously going about the curve, that's the that's the uh, the phi coordinate. If the eta and the phi are related to each other, I'm going to get this slinky like motion. And that's what I'm doing here with the curves. So I say n, n in the case of a torus is equal to two. Or in the case of a, in the case of uh, the tetrahedron is two. Okay. I hope I'm not. I hope I'm not jumping around too much. Uh, that's all n means. Is I, it, normally that would be eta if I'm looking at just the, if I'm looking at the surface, it would be eta. But I made it phi for the curve. Okay. So I'm going to show you now. This is one of the surfaces. Let me show you what that looks like. So here I'm just showing the blue surface, and you can see that the blue uh, curve, which is the, the the you know the loop, follows the 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 outside of the blue surface. You see how that works? And if I were to show all the surfaces, it would get so messy you couldn't see anything. But I'm I'm happy to show you the other ones. Maybe one at a time is a little cleaner. So here's the green one, and you can see it's the same kind of thing. Everybody can see this. And then. Uh, I'll get rid of that and show you the red one, and it's the same same thing, okay? And I, I by the way, uh, I can also let me get rid of this. I can, I can. Uh, oh, uh, this is this is my 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 psi uh, program or my psi variable, which uh, I'm going to make this a little smaller so we can see the influence on the thing. What it's doing is making actually when psi gets smaller, the toroids get bigger. It's the opposite. And when when psi gets bigger, the toroids get smaller. But see if you can imagine. See, I'm making now the torus is bigger. Okay, and they they start cropping off. So I I don't want to go too far. But here they're getting smaller. At some point they actually meet. They meet at the point one in this case, and then when it gets here, they're they're not meeting. They're 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 going closer and closer to a circle when we're doing that. Does that make sense? Everybody kind of seeing that? That's what psi does. It's changing the, and maybe it would be helpful. Let me um, let me just do one of them, the blue one, while I'm doing that, while I'm manipulating that, so you can see what that's doing. Making the torus smaller. Everybody getting what's going on? I'm getting the torus bigger, and it, it clips off after a point. Okay, so that's all it's doing. And here the torus is getting smaller and smaller. I think I had it set around. This is a. It looks nice at about this. You know, there's a certain thickness to the line. You got to play with it a little bit to get the right thickness. But 
you get the idea. That, that's basically all that's going on there. And then I want to show you one more thing. Oh, and that's in the paper. Yeah, let me go back to the paper. I'm sorry for skipping around here, but this is this is a, a point I want to make about uh, so so this is the this is the program as it looked in uh, in Mathematica. And actually it actually looks better in in uh, in GeoGebra, but and I was able to manipulate it. This is just a picture. But I, but with this one, I was able to get the tetrahedron, the cube, and, the, and I was able to do it all in one thing. In this program, it was just easier to make separate files for each one. But uh, anyway, what I wanted to show you was this. What I have is now the torus, and I and I had the button here. I could play with five, and and the enclosed. That's that sphere inside is the base sphere. Now the base sphere, as you remember, always passes through every torus, no matter how thick the torus gets. Okay, it, it'll always pass through this. And in fact, the thicker it gets, the closer it gets in, as well as getting further out. I hope that makes sense. So, uh, what I what I noticed, and this is this was the aha moment that I can describe, is that the torus, the tetrahedron, has two special points. Well, you can think of the tetrahedron as being four points. So what I imagined was two points on top where the sphere is intersecting the torus and two points on the bottom. You can, you can flip it over and you can see that there's going to be the same thing on the other side. So two points on the top, two points on the bottom. And if I get the, if I get the side just right, they'll exactly intersect. That's where they cross. Okay. And then if I make it a little bigger, it'll go inside or outside like it, like you just saw. Okay. But you can sort of see, you know, two points on the top, two more points at 90 degrees on the bottom. And likewise, you know, with the octahedron, which is easier to visualize, I can have three on the top and three on the bottom, only they're 60 degrees out of phase, if you will. And if I do it just right, they'll exactly, you know, I have to get the thickness is a little bit different number with the, with that. And then um, with the, uh, with the cube, what I have is three on the top, three on the bottom, but also one in the center. <laughs> so I have a total of eight. So you can imagine a cube on its edge. Okay. And I've got one on the top, one on the bottom, three on each side like that. And so I can do the cube also. And then with the uh, with the dodecahedron, I've got five points intersecting that that special circle on top, five on the top bottom. All, again, out of phase, whatever that is, seventy two degrees. Okay. And then uh, one on the top, one on the bottom for a total of twelve. And I could cycle through them, you know, like I do, like the like we do with the with the structures. And then with the um, dodecahedron i've got five on the top five on the bottom but five around the center and five around the top again 90 you know out of phase a little bit so i get a total of 20 points and i i can do all of those with with this and that's essentially what i'm doing so uh the no you know beyond that the rest of it's just just going through the motions and figuring out how to do it but basically that's all that's all this is 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 finding those special points and then you know kind of manipulating psi around that to get you know and and changing the thickness of the of the lines and all that kind of stuff it's just all messing around with that but basically fundamentally that's all i'm doing so are there any questions if, if you have questions go ahead and shoot it up i just want to make sure you understand that point before i go on okay i'll go on all right let me get back to up here i got so many things going on all right, so uh, now that I've shown you that, I want to show you the base sphere, which is uh, this right here, which I have in black. So you can see that each of these is uh, is going around that base sphere. And in fact, here what I can do, let's do, let's show you like the blue again. Can you see how the blue intersects with the black? I'm getting those three, in this case, two points on the top. You can't see the red one very well, but it's it's there. The red one the red one, the blue, and the green come together at this. Let me try to get as close to one. Let, let me go back let me, to show this more clearly. Uh, I want to, uh, let's see, what do I want to do? I, I want to get psi close to one. So they're, whoops. Okay. So they're actually intersecting. Okay. Now you can see that they're actually intersecting at that point, just like I was talking about. And there's three points on the top. And uh, now I'll bring back, let me bring back one of these so you can see. Okay. You see there's two points on the top and two points on the bottom. Just like I was saying. Is everybody understanding what I'm getting at? Okay. And I and I could do that with any of these. You get the same with the green. There's two on the top. It's just, it's just that 
the, the two pair differently <laughs> when I'm going the other way. And the same thing with the uh, red, two, two on these this dimension and two on that direction. So no matter how you slice it, I'm getting those same four points. I'm just slicing them different ways with the three, the three things. And I don't know, if you want to see them all together, I'll show them to you all together. It's just, it gets so messy, you can't really see anything. <laughs> but that's what it looks like when they're all there. Okay, so uh, any questions about the, the, uh, uh, the, that's the tetrahedron. And honestly, that's really, that's really the essence of it. I'll show you more with the other ones, but it's, it's just playing around with numbers at this point to do the rest of them. So let me get back kind of the way it was. But uh, I, like I said, I'm happy to share the code. Oh yeah, there is one more thing, which I call H, which stands for helicity. And uh, in this case, when I when I switch H around, I get the dual. So it's just one or minus one. But the dual of a tetrahedron is another tetrahedron. So I get the same shape. But notice what used to be uh, what used to be nodes are now faces, and what used to be faces are now nodes. Let me do that a couple more times so you can see what I'm what I mean. See what I, see how it flips around. I'm not getting any background, so I'm assuming that everybody's hearing me and you're. You're all seeing yeah, what yeah, I'm talking about. Okay, good. You good. I just want to be sure that I'm not talking to nobody. Gary uh, has a question for you. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just, do you have um, control of the thickness of each loop? Yeah, I that's what this does. That's yeah, what, that, that, that's, what the, that's what psi does. The, the, the smaller thigh, psi, the, the more, the thicker it is. And oh oh oh, I'm sorry. I understand. You're not yeah. talking about that. You're talking. You're not talking. You're talking about the loop. Yes, I do. That is uh, in settings. Let's see. Uh, no, each individual one. I have to do them individually. Uh, it's kind of clunky. But I go to uh, settings for each individual one, and I, I you know, I, I created a color for each one, and I made them all. Well, no, those are the surfaces. I made the surfaces real thin, and and real opaque, and I made the curves real thick. Let's see, here's the curves are, this is a curve. So uh, settings, so style, I made them 10 on their scale, but if I made them less, you'll see this is the, which one is this one? This is the blue one. So now the blue one will be uh, less thick. So yes, okay. that, does that answer your question? Yeah, and I just want, now, do you accommodate the paths of these circuits based on the thickness or do you just? Uh, well. Like, uh, no, no, they're going to meet at the same point, uh, regardless of how thick the line is. Psi equals one. They're going to meet. See how the blue one, it doesn't matter how thick the yeah, lines okay. are. They're still going to meet at that point. So I have to, if I want them to be a structure, the psi has to be less than one in the case of the, of the tetrahedron. Now that number, that magic number is slightly different for other ones, but, but, uh, but I, I need size less than one for that. But yeah, I mean, to, visually, yes. I, if I wanted to make it look nice, I, I thought okay. it looked nicer with the lines kind of thick. So, uh, but okay. But, but you, so it looks like you can accommodate that allows complete overlap, or accounts for yeah, or or, or complete thing. underlap would be this. You know, it's just a matter of changing size. That's all. It all is. right. Thanks. Okay. Uh, all right. So hopefully that was a good question. I'm trying to think if there's anything again. A Oops, not uh, the sphere looks the same. Nothing's really changed. So that's basically what I'm doing. All right. So let me move on to another one. So this is this is how my GeoGebra works. I'm going to open the next file, but I'm not going to save it because I, I don't want to screw it up for somebody else. But basically, here's all my files. And I'm kind of mad at GeoGebra because I've made a whole ton of files over the years and it's it's lost the ones the old ones get thrown away or I can't seem to find them. I got stuff, I got hundreds of them. I don't know where they all went. So, but that's for another day. Let's let's take a look at the cube next. So I'm not going to save that. So it's so hopefully it's not screwed up. It's just the way it used to be. So when you see it, I'm not sure if when you see the view, if you see the edited one or if you see uh the one that I did before. I, I'm not sure. So I'm afraid to, to save anything. So anyway, this is the cube. You can see the same kind of structure, the same kind of process with the cube. And you can see that each of the eight, hopefully eight points, there's three loops coming out of each of them. Okay. And it's the same, same kind of thing. I, and I, I could make it a little bigger. It, it starts uh, clipping when I make it much bigger. And uh, you can play, you can play with the settings 
uh, play with these numbers, which is I did quite a bit to try to get it to not clip so much. Um, but I, I mean, if you're interested in trying to make nicer pictures, bigger pictures or whatever, uh, this is what I ended up with. But anyway, so as you can see, let's take a look at uh, the green loop. You can pretty clearly see that it's it's going around the torus three times instead of two times like it did with the with the um, tetrahedron. So it's three times, and, and each of them are three times. The yellow is, th maybe you can see the yellow clearly is three. The blue, I can see it more clearly when I look down on it, is three, and the red is three. If you take each one separately, you can kind of see it. Okay. Uh, the red color changes. All right, so I want to show you the algebra of that. So <clears throat> I started with the same, I call it same surface, uh, SZ, which is the surface in the z direction is exactly the same as the other one. I still have phi, I still have h. This time I have another uh, surface because my my donuts um, and this this is something to, to explain. My donuts no longer I no longer have the the three planes the, the the z the z plane. So let me let me back up. The torus is identified as the plane as the vector that's perpendicular to it. So when I say the z the z uh, torus, I mean the one that's in the xy plane. When I say the x torus, I mean the one that's in the yz plane. I hope that's clear. But in this case, the the planes are not the four act, not the three axes, but it's actually the four. If you can think of the eight quadrants on a cube, okay, I have one that's you know x y z or one one one, and then I have another one that's you know one one zero and one uh, one zero or one one minus one minus one, and the four the eight quadrants. OK, but I don't have to I only need to specify four because one, one, one is the same as minus one, minus one, minus one. And, you know, one, one, minus one, minus one is the same as minus one, one, one. OK, so I only have to specify four planes. Does that make sense? I hope I didn't make the, didn't butcher that. So the four planes, uh, what I have to do then in the algebra is I take my my Z uh, one and I have a I have a curve in the Z direction, a CZ and a, a, a Taurus in the z direction, which I have those in black. I'm just just so you can see that they're there. That, that's my z plane. And by the way, I can show the axes if you want to see the axis. So there you can see, boy, it's it's getting clipped like crazy. Uh, let me see if I can unclip it. I don't. Sometimes it does that, and I have to go out and come back. I don't. I don't know why it's doing that. Let me let me do that. I I, I really don't know why it's doing that. It's uh, annoying. Let me go back, uh, open, sorry about that. Structure, I don't wanna save it because it got messed up. Okay, what I wanna do is show you the algebra and uh, yeah, sometimes having the algebra up clips it. So, but anyway, I just wanted to show you the, the, the well, not not that one, uh, the one in the Z plane, which is this, that's that's the Z plane. Boy, it still gets clipped. Maybe get the algebra out of there and won't get clipped. There we go. Okay, that's the Z plane and the Z thing. So what I'm doing is I'm translating from the Z plane to the one, one, one plane and the one minus one minus one plane and so on. Those are the four planes. Is that is everybody kind of clear on what I'm doing there? So that's, that's what's going on. So I'll get rid of the black one for now. And then, so what I call that S1, Basically, I rotated by that special angle. I rotated about the Z. I rotated about the the. Um, I rotated it up this special angle, which is this cosine of one over square root of three. I call that alpha, and then over forty five degrees. So that's, that's what this equation is saying. So I get S one. That's the yellow one in this. Uh, so let me get rid of the algebra and hope. I don't know why that yellow goes crazy. Okay, so that's the first one. You see, and you can see all the other structures go through that. And it, the same thing, I still have, I also have the base sphere, just like I did before. And let me get rid of the algebra so you can see where those intersect is going to be my special points. Now in the cube, I'm going to have one on the top and three on the sides. So you see, that's what I get. Okay, one on the top and three on the sides. You can't see it all, but that's that's the idea. And the same thing on the other side. So, so no, Greg, those four points would be correspond to the nested tetrahedrons in a cube, you think? Uh, you've got one at the corner. Well, I, I guess what I'm getting at is I'm I'm forming my cube with those eight points, one on the top and and then six on each of those sides. So I don't know if that quite answered. Maybe I misunderstood your question. Well, yeah, no, I can follow up later. It's just I, I think it just you 
could always. I find know what you two. mean by nesting. Uh, when you when you say nesting, I think of uh, uh, like uh, you know some sort of a fractal or something. But I, that's not what no, I'm talking I, about. I think when you, to take Maybe. the eight the, the eight vertices of a cube, four of them correspond to one tetrahedron, and the other four correspond to another mm -hmm. tetrahedron, where they're kind of interlaced. Um, but uh, that, that we can follow up. It, it could be. Yeah, I, I guess I'm not quite following. Let's see. Let me. Uh, I just wanted to sh uh, play. Oh, let me go back to this. Uh, I could get you any color. It's all going to be the same. I, I did. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't. I, I'm not thinking in those terms. Just so you just to be clear, I'm, I'm only thinking in terms of. Uh, let me get rid of this. Yeah, yeah. I can't I, do I, two can things at later. once. Yeah, yeah I, I'm just this is the red one. This is the same kind of a deal. I can do it with all the colors. They're going to intersect, and it's not exactly intersecting because I'm, you know, I have it slightly. If I wanted to make it exactly, I could go back and uh, tweak. Uh, where is it? It, it? it keeps moving. Yeah, I have it. Let me try. And the problem is, <laughs> I can't see the the uh, the graphic very very well when I'm tweaking this. I have to get it out of there to see it, it's what I'm doing. But yeah, I think I went I went too far the wrong way. Uh, let me go the other way and see if that what I'm trying to do is find that that's sweet. There's a special point. I can't remember what it is where they meet exactly there. That I'm closer to it here. You can see I'm pretty close to where they're meeting exactly. But I'm not exact. I'm not I'm not dead on. It isn't one. I can't remember what it is. I calculated it, but I don't remember. But anyway, you get the idea where it's the, the, there's an implied sphere and they're meeting at those four mm -hmm. points on the top. That's the cube. And and um and let me uh, let me go. I think it's cleaner. We had it right about there. I think it was. I'm trying to put it back to where it was, uh, and then to get rid of this. Uh, the surfaces are 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 nice to visualize the spheres, but they they really get in the way of seeing you know the structure. So here we're back to the structure, and from some angles it looks it looks cleaner. Now here the uh, yeah let me change the s I changed it too much so they're too far apart let me let me clean it up a little this this really does matter when you want to make it look nice I think I want to have them right up against each other kind of like that I think that's about right yeah let's go with that and that makes it look more like a cube it was harder to see it looked more like a mess when it when uh when i had it the other way but here even i they could even be tighter still i think so let me go just a little bit more i don't want them crossing into each other something like that that should do it and then get the algebra out of the way okay that looks pretty good it might be inter, it might be interlacing a little bit but you get the idea how this works and it's the same principle with all of them now uh i'm going to show you uh if i change the helicity all it what it does is it basically turns the cube into uh into a, a an octahedron but it unfortunately i'll have to tidy it up a little bit that's why i put it in a separate file so let me just do it and you'll see what i mean i'm going to have to play with it some but now um there you'll see six points oh i'm sorry that's that's still the cube eh, never mind something's crazy that's still a cube, isn't it? Well, okay. If you, if, you look, if you look sideways, it, it, you might have. No, a no. Bit. Well, the, the faces think... are not. No, that's a cube. I'll I'll get you the. Let, let's just. I don't remember now. Uh, why? Why didn't? Oh, I didn't change the helicity. That's why. Let me. Okay. <laughs> that's why. Okay. I thought I did. Okay. Yeah. This is the this is the octahedron. But you see, I have to clean it up. Now I have to go play with this again. Okay. To get it to go. See, they're not the same. Now that should be about right, but uh, yeah, it gets clipped off. It's it's annoying having to deal with it. That's that's why I have another file for the octahedron. So it isn't it isn't that uh, it's really the same thing, but just uh, I, I made it cleaner. And uh, you know, you have to spend time with it to get it all nice. So let me open up the octahedron, which is over here, and I don't want to save that mess I just created. So here's the octahedron, a little cleaner. You know, as we get to the higher ones, they, they're harder to visualize, but you can see six points and four four things coming out of each point, right? It's a little maybe kind of easy to see, see from the side. You can see the yellow, red, blue, green coming out of that corner. And you take any corner and it'll be, why can't I grab those other corners? Here we go. 
uh, I think they're going to be in different orders. So that's interesting. Okay, so that's kind of what's going on here. And there's the, it's kind of easy to see from the end, the edge views. Otherwise, yep. it's kind of, kind of unclear. And I, again, I can make this line thicker or thinner. I can, you know, move them around, but it's, it's basically interesting to me that it, all I did was change the, when I, when I change the helicity, what that means is the second coordinate, which is the psi coordinate, instead of being right handed, let's see, these are, these are right handed. Instead of being left handed, they're right handed. And yet, <laughs> when you do that, the octahedron becomes the cube and the cube becomes the octahedron just by flipping the helicity of the individual circuits around which is fascinating. I have to sit down and figure out the math on all that, but that's uh, that's that's kind of cool, I think. Uh, that's the only change yeah. I made. And then I had to change the psi coordinate because uh, it, it, it comes in differently. They, they meet at a different point than they do with the other one. But uh, let me, uh, just for fun, I'll, I'll throw in the, the sphere, which is right here so you can see. It's pretty close to zero. I mean, I can play with psi, which is, you, you've seen enough of this to be convinced. I think the meet point is right. I guess that's right about one also. Yeah, it's not one for the, the cube, but it is one for this. So it's, I don't know, I like about that. Looks pretty good to me. So there's there's that again. That, uh, and if you were to, if I were to, well, let me, let me show you one of the, any one of the surfaces uh, and you'll see, okay. Again, here's the three meet points on top where the where the the, uh, the sphere meets the torus, and here's the meet points on the bottom. Again, I, I moved it a little, so but if I were to put, bring it back to zero, they would all meet exactly at that point. Okay, you want me to do that? I I, I don't want you to believe me. I want you to be convinced. <laughs> if I have it exactly at one, that should be exactly all four of them come together at the meet points. Clear. And that's true on the bottom as well. Oh, I can't get it. There we go. Okay. All right. So everybody okay on the the the, uh, the tetra the the other two are more of the same, but I'm happy to show them to you. So let's let's go. Or, or is there any more any questions on the on these up to this point, or should we go on? I know you said I got to get done in 45 minutes, so I'm um, I'm trying to get there. Did you have a question, Don? Are we good? No, I'm just saying we're following along here. Okay, good. I, I got so we got the struct the icosa and the dodeca. The only difference is helicity h, but and I'm not going to save this because I don't want to mess. I don't want you to have to look at my mess. But as you can see, it's more complex looking. This is the dodeca, which is cleaner looking to me than the icosa. Really looks like a mess. But uh, anyway, as you can see, each corner <coughs> has uh, three three loops coming into or going out of each corner. So this, and also any two adjacent corners are going to have two of the same. So let's, for example, this leg here, these two points, this has green, blue, and yellow. This has blue and yellow, but orange instead of green. Okay. And everyone, everyone's going to just have three of the six. There's a total of six loops. And again, these six loops correspond to six planes. Now the six planes, uh, you know, there's, a, you can figure out how to do it, but uh, I, this is how I did it. Uh, I, I I did one. I I translated it up a little bit, like I did the other one, and then I I just you know manipulated them around to get the six planes. But that's in this case, each of these paths. Whoops, I just fell. Anyway, each of these paths has five loops in it. I don't know. Pick any color, and you can see that it loops around five times. So I'll show you the embedded torus. Here's uh this. Oh, that's the Z. I don't want to do that. Uh, T was a temporary. So here's one. So there's the orange one. You can see the orange loops around that. Okay. And uh, just to show you, here's the uh, embedded sphere. Okay. And we're pretty close to the meet points. Uh, not perfect, but you get the idea. There's there's going to be five meet points. And then there's five on top, five meet points on top. You see that? Five meets points on the side, five on top. And then the other side, same thing, five on top. So there's a total of 20 points, which is the dodecahedron. Okay, and there's three coming into and out of each one. And I could, instead of orange, I could pick some other color. It doesn't matter. Uh, they're all going to do the same thing. Greg? Yeah. Uh, when I circuit the uh, dodecahedron, it takes me two loops to go around and make one uh, complete circuit. 
And okay. what I'm seeing here is you're doing it with a single circuit. Yeah, uh, that's that's that the way. Well, that's the way I've always done it. So I, I'm not. I'd have to. I'd have to take a look. Show me a picture of yours. This is this is the way I know how to do it. So well, I, uh, I have a good uh, solution. I guess suggestion there. It, it, you, there are probably more than one solution. Oh, I'm sure there are. I think yeah. it, it may come I'm down to it. Each vortex will either have a clockwise or counterclockwise twist to it. Uh huh. And, and there could be different combinations. They all may be clockwise. You could have a combination of half clockwise, half counterclockwise. And from my experience, you do get different number of circuits. To well, yeah, no, these are, you'll notice these are all, these, these are all, I don't like to use clockwise and counterclockwise because that's a, that's a two dimensional concept. Because if you flip a clock over, it's going the other way. But yeah, right-handed and left-handed are, yeah, like right left are three dimensional. So you can see that these are all right-handed. So if you follow the, let's, I'm following the yellow one. If you follow it and then your, your, your fingers curve around in the direction of, of psi, your thumb points in the direction that it's going. So your thumb is pointing in the theta direction and your fingers are curling in the psi direction. It's, you have to use your right hand to do it. And, uh, and uh, yeah, you have to do that with my left hand. You do that with your left hand. Well, yeah. then, you, <laughs> well, then you're curling backwards. And no, this is this is right-handed. This is right-handed. So uh, as I'm following the yellow, as I'm following the yellow with my thumb, my fingers are curling in the direction that's 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 going. So I'm using my right hand to get this one. Is anybody else? Uh, and the green, the same thing. And they're all the same handedness. The green is my thumb. The okay. uh, green is going along the theta direction, oh, along the path of the torus, and then your the side direction is going around the torus. So that's curling your with your hand. You need your right hand to do it. I need my right hand. <laughs> unless, how many colors again? There, how many? There's six colors, colors because there's okay. six planes. Oh, Carl! I I'm so happy to see you here, Carl. I haven't seen well, you in a long it's, time. <laughs> it's triple mutual. Thank you. Good. Oh, so yes. wonderful. To see you. I I love your work. I still I. Your your stuff is on my on my to do list for sure. Yeah, well, I, I keep this, coming back to it. <laughs> I I I still admire all the uh, spheres. That, yeah, uh, I did that for you. Here's the shows ago. that you uh, did for me. Uh, the calculations. Uh, quite I don't have Mathematica anymore, so I'll have to do redo all of it in geo. But I like GeoGebra. It's just clunkier. You know, it's not as elegant. Mathematica is very elegant. I showed you that that one page had all the equations in it and it's just i don't know it's just clear it's very satisfying i guess for a mathematician but but you know if you don't care about if you only care about the end result then this is nice this is probably nicer and and you can share it which i like so uh anyway did you have any other questions carl i'm sorry i, I no that uh that's it thank you okay all right so that's and again the i this is this is right-handed so if i change the helicity Oh, that's negative. I've changed it to left-handed. Now these are left-handed. Now I follow the the right one. This this is the dodecahedron, but I have to change phi in order to make it look nice. Uh, as I told you before, a uh, psi. I said phi. I meant psi. I have to play with this. I have to make it much small smaller in order for there. They see how they wrapped around. It? There's the meet point right about there. See where they're all meeting, and they're meeting at twelve points. So everybody, and it, it's clipping a little bit in a couple places. So let me make it smaller. This is the meet point for the dodecahedron. But these these are this is left-handed. So left-handed gives me the uh, the dodec the uh, icosahedron, which is twelve points. But uh, but you know each surface each uh, um, play uh, surface I guess is three is a triangle. Okay, everybody seeing that? So if I go a little further, then they cross. Oh, whoops, I went the wrong way. This way, then they cross. So that's the dodec. Actually, that's not too bad. That's about as good as I was going to get on the, the file. So everybody see, we can you can see that there's five circuits coming out of each node. So in this case, orange, red, green, uh, yellow, blue. Okay, and there's 12 of those. And again, I'll show you the, let me get the sphere back. The sphere is just a unit sphere. It's that that sphere with the A in it. Uh, here it is. Oh, I don't. I don't. Mean, I mean that. I mean this. There we go. Okay. So you can see uh, they're coming out of those twelve points. Which, if I had a, if I put a, 
uh, any one of these uh, surfaces, it's going to be five along the top and then one in the center. Same thing on the other side, just like I said earlier. Anybody kind of getting that? Let me see if I can get that meet point again. Where was that? I think that was, uh, no, I went going the wrong way. There we go. There it is. Pretty close. See, it's not exactly one here. and I, You can calculate it, but there's the meet point. That's what I'm, what I was talking about. So you can see all the circuits are coming in and out of that meet point. Okay. Um, we're at 45 minutes, and I've I believe I've showed you all of them, and I've given you links so you can play with them yourself. I'm more than willing to share the code with you. You know, if there's any details on the code, it's you know, uh, not that much to it. I mean, I've pretty much explained everything. Uh, this is the code. And, you know, it, it. every time you type something in, it gives you the answer. <laughs> so that's what takes up most of the room. The code itself is pretty simple. Um, but B, uh, I made a vector B in this case, uh, one, one, one. So I was just rotating. Rotating a, about that axis is the same as shifting nine degrees on about uh, about Z and then shifting 90 about X is the same as rotating about that X. It just was cleaner to do it that way. So I made a little vector called little B, which I don't even know where that is, but that's all that is. So the algebra isn't, isn't all that exciting. Um, so you said you wanted me to be open for questions. I'm happy to do that. Gary has his hand up and has a question, Gary. Yeah, I, I've, um, I've recently, <clears throat> Um, been exploring structures like like this, like you and Don have, and I, I just recently come across the ability to create similar structures. Oh, neat! And I use a an arc based system. So basically, I, I always constructing a tetrahelix, and using instead of tetrahedrons, I'm using arcs that represent a, a dihedral angle. And what I found interesting, I can also demonstrated with physical models is that when you get that vertex point, like when they, when they all converge together, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm assuming just in my models right now, well, in my virtual models, that they can intersect perfectly. And what I found is when they meet at those points, you can create a kind of a switch function and then select which way you want to continue. Right, mm. right, right now, you're, you know, have a fixed arrangement of what comes in. It, it stays to the same color. But when you get to the point where, where they all merge together, um, you know, you can now switch colors mm. and, and create the same structure, but either from three loops, one loop, six loops, you know, some combination of um, either, you know, s separate smaller loops or one big continuous loop. And uh, we, we should compare notes. Yeah, well, I, I would love to see what you got, please. Yeah, and uh, and I'd be happy to share what I have if I can figure out how. <laughs> if I have to, I'll take the lines and, of code and just dump them into a file. Then you'd have to re retype them into GeoGebra, which seems ridiculous, but I could do that. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I could show you a few things from a previous presentation, but I don't want to hog up the whole time. So I'll okay. We uh, get yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind. I'd be very it. interested. Yeah. Oh, you right. could do oh. that. You could do that next week, Gary, when we have a roundtable to discuss today's presentation. Great, yeah, great idea. Also, uh, Al, you have your hand up. Yeah, and I was just kind of running actually with what Gary was saying. So, uh, which is, I think, when they come together, you know, I, I'm a big, I, I, I'm really fascinated with a spin or, or you know, that when points come together, that they're kind of twisting around to get by each other, mm. which can, which can explain that changing happening at that at that vertices mm -hmm. um so i so i think that gives even a, a little bit more of just like it's not just changing but that could be because of that interaction mm. um, um so that was all it was just kind of a it was almost a corollary just to what gary was saying and, and i wanted to say this is amazing oh good. Um, i'm glad you like it yeah yeah I, I apologize i was late uh by, well, by i'll let it go this minute time, or two. next time i'm, I'm well done. can you repost can you repost the links in the chat <laughs> Well, I understand that we're going to do this, put this up on YouTube. Is that right? Oh, good. Oh, yeah. But I mean, the, the links that you put in the chat so we can get on and Geo uh, weren't there oh, when I came in because I came in. They're after. not there now? I no, they weren't up. there for me because I came in later. Oh, yeah. I can put them up again. Yeah, no Thanks. problem. Uh, All right. Or, Al, I can send you the file in email. 
That yeah, would be great. Right. Sam, I'd thanks. be happy to email. You can email me. But... Yeah, I'll take care of it, Greg. I'll send Perfect. it up. Thank you. Actually, Greg, Greg this, this is a good example of, um, I believe, each vortex is the same handedness, right? So they're probably all right handed or all left handed. Well, in the case of the tetrahedron, because it's a dual of itself. Yeah, these these would be, uh, let's see, let me I have to kind of do it. It's harder with two. <laughs> yeah, uh, these these are right handed, uh, yeah. as I'm seeing. Okay. Which, and, and if, yeah, from, from my experiments that well, what I do is I start with actually six circles, like six complete circles aligned to the edges of a tetrahedron, you know, zip tied them together. And you end up with you know kind of a structure like this you know it's the same right same yeah kind of oh structure. yeah it looks very similar right. um but depending on how i rewire these vortexes i can make this as three loops like you have here but if i make one right-handed and the other three left-handed it converts to a single circuit mm, yeah I, there, I mean this is just the beginning we could you know i, I i'd like to be able to i know that don has you know several complicated structures that are like uh that are right and left hand at the same time they're inside of each other i haven't done that yet but i'm sure that we could do that it's just uh just a matter of more more programming you know more time we could i'm sure we could we would probably have to have my guess would be if i were to <clears throat> do something like what you know what i would imagine a structure inside a structure so I'd, i might have two base spheres you know those black spheres i could have one that's half the size of the other or, or you know some smaller size of the other and then it would meet at the same point would be the opposite helicity i'm sure that could be done yeah. <clears throat> and i could build you know a, a, a dual structure that way like or i don't know what you call that don <laughs> when there's one that's right in one that's left-handed but call an ambi structure oh an ambi structure okay <clears throat> now this is this is there's also helicity due to how it comes out of now this is coming out of the of the node in a right-handed sense okay as, as you flip around as, it, as you're coming out and the they're curling out right-handed but the uh but the, the individual circuits are left-handed that's i find that fascinating i don't know if you can see that but if i were to let me let me put in uh one of the surfaces so you can see okay so let's take a look at the blue one <clears throat> you can see the blue one is left-handed as you as you follow as your thumb follows along the torus your cur your fingers are curling along the path of the blue line is is left-handed is everybody under, agree understand that yeah so and yet <clears throat> they're coming out of the structure in a right-handed sense so i find that int i think it's i think it's true that's always the case that whatever the helicity of the individual pieces are is opposite of the helicity of the way it comes out of the uh, of the node <clears throat> but honestly i don't know that for 100 percent sure i'm i that's just my instinct <laughs> we could verify that though Oh, I, I did have one other point I wanted to make, and I know that if there's more questions that I, I just wanted to, wanted to say this because it was in my my um, my talk my blurb, and that is I was just talking about the you know I, I envision, and again I know Don and I have differences about what this might actually mean. What what could you do with it physically? And uh, I envision like you know each of these circuits, each each of these loops being a circuit. So like there's there's actual electricity or something flowing along the blue in a certain direction and there's a one also flowing in the red in another direction and there's another flowing in the green in another direction and um the problem with that is again i think of ampere's law says two parallel currents attract and you know opposite currents are going to repel now what what we would want is just a balance of those things which unfortunately we don't get in any with an odd number coming out of each loop you're going to get you're going to have two going one way and one going the other way, or you're going to have all three going one way and two going and the other is going over. And, and the reality is, I know, and I wish I had a way to show this graphically, but no matter how you do it, uh, if you have, let's say the green, let's say, let's say they're all coming out of this node. So the blue's going that way and the green's going that way and the red's going that way. If that were true, there will also be two let's take a look at this node now that this one's going into that node and the green one is going out of there it's coming into that node but the red one is coming out of that node and it will always be the case so i'm going to have two going in and one going out of all three of them of the three other ones and three going into the other one i hope that makes sense so i've got a 3o and i've got a what i've got 3o and i've got a one minus two one minus two one minus two 
and there's no way to, there's no other way to do it no matter how you have the, the currents flow it's going to be one of them is going to be the odd man out one of them is going to be three oh and one of them, all the rest of them are going to be different. Greg, do you follow me if you uh, look if you look at the ambi structure it changes the thing so that now it would work electrodynamically it's possible yeah that's possible i don't i don't i'm because just saying with this alone is right and left-handed together you would need to have four of them you need to have four of them because in order to have each of them you know be the same in some so sense it's actually six at h vertex there's actually okay. six loops okay now but, so so what i noticed is i had the same problem with all uh, if you remember, the cube has three coming out of each vertex, and uh, the the dodeca has three coming out of each vertex, which is which are all odd numbers. So I have the same problem with all those. And then the icosa has five coming out of each vertex, and that's an odd number also. So I'm ba basically going to have the same kind of problem. The only one that actually works, and I'll bring it up here, uh, is the uh, the octahedron. When I say works, I mean works in this sense. I don't mean you know that the, they're not worth looking at for other reasons. But it, it, let's suppose we had the red coming out of this loop and the blue coming out of this loop and the green coming in and the yellow coming in. Okay. <laughs> uh, and I haven't mapped this out, so it's hard to follow. But it, let's just take a look at this node now. It, given that, I, that, that the, the, green, the blue is going into that node, the green, which came out of that node, is now going to come, oh boy. This is hard. <laughs> going to come out of that node. It's going to come into this node. Everybody get that? Okay. And then the red, which came out of that node, is going to come out of this node. And the yellow, which came out of that node, is going to come. Boy, it's hard to follow. It's going to come out of that node. So I get two ins and two outs at all four corners, all six corners. You, you follow what I'm saying? Now that that satisfies me in terms of an Ampere's law sort of thing. I'm going to get two 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 attractions and two repulsions so they're sort of balanced there's going to be two ins and two outs in terms of flow it's the only one that'll do that by itself um and now maybe we get into ambi structures and other it, things it, uh, it's possible i'm not saying it and i'm not saying that's what it has to be but that's what i immediately think of when i see these loops is something's flowing so go ahead gary you had a question yeah I, i'm just wondering with with the graphic control you have in this program can you assign arrow directions to these loops I probably can, but uh, I, I'm, I'm giving you an honest confession here, honest confession time. As of two days ago, Don reminded me that I I promised I was going to do this, and I thought, oh my gosh, I better just, at that time, all I had was the Mathematica program, so I spent a day trying to reconstruct it in Sage, which uh, just to prove, here's my Sage code, <laughs> and I, I tried, I tried to do it, <laughs> and I, I finally gave up yesterday morning, and I started working on this yesterday morning and uh and it didn't take honestly it didn't take that long because i knew the algorithms it wasn't that hard but i was kind of freaking out for a little bit <laughs> i thought oh boy i'm not gonna have anything to show <laughs> so joe, joe so you have a sure question there's a, there's a way to do it sorry go yeah. ahead joe yeah uh as I, as you're with the octahedron, the way it it seems to do that, it seems to have a similar characteristic as to what happens when you do a dual transformation um, of the polyhedral forms. Now, what I mean by that is, is that if we think about the faces of the polyhedron, you have an inner face and you have an outer face, and if you rotate the interface in the mm -hmm. opposite direction of the outer face mm -hmm. and connect the vertices of the outer face to the inner face mm -hmm. in that transformation mm -hmm. you now always have that vertex is an equal number mm. okay okay so that means to me that you have that possibility with this if you think even of it with, in those terms even what with I like the fascinating here mm -hmm. is how can I, in, in the way that I look at it, the, the, these loop transformations, is how would that come back into the toruses that you're working with? I, mean, uh, I think they share a torus. So that means that probably you have a double loop around the torus. It's, it's a single loop, but it, mm -hmm. but it crosses itself. Mm -hmm. And I'm not too sure how you would do that. 
maybe there's a twist in it at some point to where it's going left hand, then it goes right hand and it mm -hmm. crosses. Mm -hmm. But an example of one of the models is something like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can see the double face. There's two faces here. So one's an outer face and one's an inner face. And so the vertex is actually the outer is connected to the inner of another one that's adjacent to. Yep. Yeah, this is this is I, I don't have an answer. It's, it's a good speculation. What's well, happening right now is exactly what I was hoping is that this would be this would spark a lot of people's interest and would maybe want to do more with it. So uh, this is just the beginning of what we could do. Yeah. So well, what's uh, nice uh, is I see all that Joe, I see all those beautiful stru structures in the on the back of your, you know, behind you. And um, we might be able to model a lot of those things. Now, this is a tool to be able to model those things uh you know in on uh, in yeah the computer graphics so hopefully some of those oh other i think your work is fascinating it's just uh I'm, I'm intrigued by the the geometry that you're doing there mm -hmm. we I, have reached the 12 o'clock hour uh oh and i would like to uh remind you greg that uh you're, of course you're invited next week to yeah, join with us that. at 11 o'clock to answer questions and absolutely uh, those yeah. who have attended today. Willing to do that, uh, Greg. Good to see old friends. Okay. Awesome. Hey, uh, before we leave, uh, can I just get a quick question? Um, yes, yep. go right ahead. Well, I, you know, I'm not at all familiar with structures and circuits and whatnot, but this reminds me a lot. I read a, uh, had a book uh, uh, of uh, Conrad Boxman's work. Uh, he called uh, around structure, and he called it the grapevine where he was building intricate large structures uh, with members like, you know, uh, physical members that intertwined with each other to lock the structure in place as opposed to pinning them. So I'm just wondering if anybody else is familiar with uh, Conrad Boxman's work, uh, the grapevine work. I'm not, but I'd... Um, might be something to look into because it's uh, he might he might have been thinking about it, but you know, working with it in a, a different sense, you know. Uh, but um, that's all. That was just a quick comment. Yeah, Conrad Boxman, B O X. Well, it's W W A C H S M A N N. I think. Boxman. Uh, Waxman Conrad well, K, uh, K. Probably there's a bunch of Waxmans. Yeah, let's see. Are you guys seeing my screen? Uh, well, with, 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 with a, with a okay, K well, instead of I'm a C. I'm just looking it up here. Uh, Conrad with a, oh, with a K. Yeah, yeah, with a K. And just type grapevine in there somewhere. If right. he goes back, I mean, he built uh, Maybe. He's kind of a. Uh, okay. There we go. And the grapevine structure. Oh, yeah, boy, that was, that's it right there. Okay. Um, so well, you can kind of see. Well, yeah. I mean, it's um, yeah. The book is is more like a bunch of photographs uh, mm. of his work. It doesn't go into the you know whatever the mathematics or or whatnot. But um, it's very interesting. Anyway, when when you were talking about you know these circuits coming into an intersection and twisting together. Uh -huh. you know to form a node he was kind of looking at it in terms of yeah can we just make structures out of that that just sort of organically um uh stabilize themselves you know um but, yeah. yeah it's it's a great it's it's an interesting little ex, you know book <laughs> yeah good thank you any other comments well closing remarks I may make just just this comment that, uh, you know, in in particle physics, we have the neutron uh, and it has almost the same mass as a proton, which is charged. And I'm not therefore I'm not too concerned uh, that in demanding the you know, a model in which uh, uh, Ampere's law and, you know, would would hold uh, because uh, uh, I think you can have flow without having uh, uh, the flow charged in any way. Uh, and, uh, the, you know, so I, I don't, I don't yeah. mind. Go ahead. 
No, no, you're right. I mean, I, that's just, again, that's how I think of it. In in my universe, I, I, I think of uh, charge as, I, I think of matter as sort of pre-charge. The matter itself at the, what some fundamental level, you know, satisfies certain conditions. And what are those conditions? I believe um, it's the reason why I, I come up with something like an Ampere's law, not necessarily because it's charged, but because it's matter. And and uh, and the the, the, um, the vision I have is if you if you take water and have it flow through a, a hose and you put your thumb over it and, and let it squirt out more, what happens to the stream? Uh, you didn't stop it completely. It goes faster. Yes. Yes. Okay. It goes faster because the aperture is smaller. So, in other words, the same amount of matter has to pass through the the, the, the hose as yes. passing through the small aperture. So it goes faster through that than it, than it does otherwise. And that's that's conservation of matter, which is basically Ampere's law is saying the same sort of thing. That when you know, uh, the, let's just reverse it and say if something is moving faster. Then it's it's it, well or like like water coming down a a a, a, a waterfall is the yes. uh, the cross section at the bottom of the waterfall fall is smaller than the cross section at the top of the waterfall even though water is incompressible it's because it's moving faster a lot of, and same thing with your sink so we can just reverse it and say things that are that are closer together are got that way because they're attracted to each other it's conservation of matter that causes that motion is causing the attraction naturally which things that naturally want to repel motion is causing the attraction and uh and then that, that has to uh that's causing the constriction so that's why i'm looking for it doesn't have to be charged per se but it has to be something matter of some sort that's moving in some certain way and so there's a flow i guess along these lines and i i am struggling with just that issue i talked about earlier but i do want to say one thing you know the tetrahedron structure has three parts to it and you and it's it, and it's you know it's you can't get past the fact there has to be at least three that's that's the point so it's kind of like quarks in that way i mean you know i'm not saying it is a quark but <laughs> you know there's there's three paths and the three paths are intertwined and you can't just get rid of one and expect the whole thing to stay together yet it's it's irreducibly yeah. complex but the other thought along those lines greg is the way i'm trying to solve this problem too is that i think there could be more than one of these things on top of each other there could be yeah, and, right. and they and they could be overlapping, it. and in some cases there is some cancelization, and then some, you know, sure. addition. Um, yeah. But they can take different paths. I, I think there's a beautiful structure that can trap energy. Once you get in, it, it, you to follow a path and you get to that switching point, and doesn't matter what path you take, you're always going to end up back in the structure again. It sort of recirculates itself. And mm -hmm. I think there could be more. There could be parallel paths. Mm -hmm. that contribute to more balance as well in, in you know more than just the one single loose we see good yeah greg, well I'm looking forward to more discussion next week greg fascinating well, gary yes. i think you hit that point to where duality always exists there is no such thing as a singularity you always have at least a duality mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah at least yeah and, and perhaps more right mm -hmm. um uh, Greg, I, I would like you to take a look at, at the Clinton field structure, which is uh, in the book I sent you. Yes, I have that book here. Here, here it is. And uh, you'll, you'll see those three loops uh, circuited a little differently. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I could build, I think in theory, at least we could build well, everything yeah. that's in the book. Every picture you got, I should be able to, to, to recreate using this, this mechanism. That's awesome, Greg. That's really the thing we could use the most is a strong mathematics to illustrate the principle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that really is the next step. That's, That's what I was hoping I'd come away with. More more stuff on my plate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay, I'd, I'd like us to agree to wrap up today. And I invite everyone to join us next Saturday at 11 o'clock. When Greg will again appear and be ready with his spear and sword to defend his work. <laughs> Gary, I, I really, uh, Greg, I really thank you for coming. Thank you. It was, um, Absolutely. I'm glad really you're doing. Thanks for program. asking me, Don. Yeah, we thank all. You, Gary. Uh, thank you. Thanks very much, Greg, and we look forward to knowing more next week. Okay. Well, what's next? Do I stop sharing or do we? Yes, please do. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay.
Yeah. All right, everyone. Have a great week. All right. Thanks. And uh, let's hope it goes by quickly so we can get back to discussions next Saturday. Okay. All right. All right. Good week. All right. Have a great day. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you. All right.